So hello everybody and welcome to another Power BI hacks, tips and tricks, Curval did you know video. I'm going to show you five tips that you might not know about Power BI that will make you do your Power BI much better, faster, better. Okay, so all of that in just a second. So hello there, do you know that I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday and Fridays? So make sure you hit the subscriber button and the bell to receive notifications every time I do that. How about we get started with today's video? So hello and welcome back, my name is Ruth Pozzola from Curval.com and I'm going to show you five tips that you might not know about Power BI that will make your Power BI better for sure. Tip number one, this tip comes from Gilbert from for Mu, love, love, love his branding. On Twitter, he shared this. Did you know that you can actually quickly change the text size for your visuals? So, you know, when you have, for example, a matrix, that's, I guess, the worst example of all. You have a matrix and you want to change the size of the values, the size of the column names and the row names, and it takes forever to do that. Well, here is the trick. You go to the formatting pane, you search, on the search pane, you click text, you write text, and that will bring up all the fields that have text on it. And if you change it for some of the visuals, at least on the grid, on the first one, it will change all of them. It doesn't work for all, but it works for some. So, but otherwise, you have all the text fields there, so you can change it very, very quickly. How good is that? Thank you, Gilbert. That was amazing. Very good. Three, three. The next one. It comes from David profiling the entire data set. Did you know that? Well, first you need to know that you, say, you, know, how how you have the possibility to profile your data. That means basically that it will tell you how many errors you have, how many blanks you have, and how many fields you have. Uh, it was released last year. I don't remember exactly when, but before you could only profile the data for the first thousand columns. Now you can go down there and change for the entire data set and it will profile for the entire data set. And to be really, really honest with you, I don't use that feature very much because I feel that it slows down Power Query. So I only turn it on when I need it, which is not very often. But with that said, we move to the third trick. The third trick is, you know, when, when you put uh, fields on the filter pane, either on the visual, on the report level, on the page level, it doesn't matter, you cannot click on them to see which table they belong to. Um, you can do that on the first pane, but you cannot do it on the filter pane. And uh, it's been quite annoying because sometimes you have the same name on different tables. You have product name both on the sales table and on the product table. So, okay, which filter is that? Is it from the product table or the sales table? Well, if you hover over, it will tell you which table it is. Cool, eh? And then you can do the same that on the filter pane. You can actually hover over and it will tell you on the fields pane and it will tell you which column it comes from. So that is really useful. I actually read on Twitter that you could do now the same for cast, um, calculated columns that you can hover over and it will give you the formula, but I, it doesn't work for me, so... I don't know, does it work for you? Okay, the next one. Uh, this is a question that I got here on the YouTube channel. It says, hey Ruth, was wondering the same thing as Nigel. There was somebody else that asked that, but I didn't get what the question was. But, so he's explaining, he says, so you have two visualizations on the same page and you have three slicers, so three slicers and two visualizations. I want one visualization to be affected by the three slicers, but the other one to be affected only by two. Is that possible? And yes, it is. There is a function or a functionality called edit um, interactions. So if you click on the filter that you don't want to be applied on your visual, you click on that and then you click on edit interactions, then it will appear uh, on the visual, a highlight, filter, or then a stop sign. And if you click on that, it will stop that filter to propagate to that visual. And you can do it with anything on your canvas, obviously. So yes, you can do it. And that is a wonderful, wonderful feature. Which leads me to the last trick. And it was, this was released last 
month of February 2019. And uh, before, you know, you, you could only highlight on, when you click on something, it highlighted by default the rest of the visuals, okay? And to be able to have it to filter, you have to go with <laughs> the things and change every single one of them, which was a pain. So the Power BI team has actually released for the report level settings, level level settings for the report level settings, you can change that behavior. So you don't have to do that one by one. Now, you can do that also on the Power BI service. And this is a tip that comes from Daniel on Twitter. And it actually came first on the service and then they publish it on the desktop, okay? So thank you, Daniel, for the tip. And now you've asked me, when do you know the Power BI team will release that on the global settings? <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if they're going to do that. But maybe Microsoft can let us know if that is on the works because we would love, love, love to have it instead of changing it on every single report. Okay, so those are my tips. I hope that I surprise you with at least one of them and that you find them useful. And um, thanks for watching. I'll see you again on Wednesday or Friday, depending on when I publish this video. Take care. Bye.